Hi guys, uh, we're here at the National Institutes for Sports in Malaysia, uh, where we've been testing the national dodgeball team, uh, doing some blood tests on them, some heart rate tests, and now they're in the hall behind us, uh, running around with GPSs so we can see exactly what they're doing. And we're super honored that we have Dr. Sanju here with us from the biomechanics department, who's also been helping the guys with their throws so they understand how to maximize the power, efficiency, and accuracy. So, Dr. Sanju, can you tell us briefly a little bit about the mechanics of the throw and how to make it more efficient? Yeah, one of the basic things in the uh, dot ball throw is that uh, there are three basic phases. One is the approach, uh, then the stance, that is the, the execution phase, and then the follow through. All these three has to be in a synchronized uh, pattern, that is the moment one, one after the other. One of the most important thing at the time of uh, release is that in the, uh, there should be a long, quite uh, comfortable stance phase and uh, when you are on at the time of execution, your elbow flex in, you know, that's from the extension portion to the flex portion and then a nice trunk rotation sub and during this trunk rotation, the shoulder, elbow almost in line so that you can make use of your pectoral muscles in the release and the wrist almost in line with the ear which can give you a summation effect in release. Cool. So basically what we're telling them, nice smooth motion, rotate through, keep the ball low so we can get the power of the chest muscle as opposed to what sometimes you see them up here trying to use a tricep muscle which is smaller, correct? Yeah. yeah. And then to reduce injuries to the elbow and the shoulder to keep during the rotation, the shoulder, elbow should be on line. Almost on line. Yeah, yeah. the ball or so other ball side. Basically, in, in this particular position, I miss uh, your wrist, elbow, and shoulder should be almost in one line. Okay, so I'm looking pretty good there, yeah? Yeah. So that in this case, you can apply greater force actually. When you push, you can actually. Yeah, really I can feel that my chest muscle here. Yeah. And your dianterior ductal and pectoral muscle, like you can just, you can, uh, yeah. Can you see my muscles working here? Yes. <laughs> so if you make use of this uh, movement, you get more power in this release. Yeah. So what we've seen in a lot of our guys, the ball is very high and behind, so that's why they're not getting as much power. So when you're actually keeping it higher, so you're using a different group of muscles mm. at the time of release. So, uh, and also, you are at the time of release, uh, if the elbow is too high, then you are making use of only a price as possible in the radius. Right, and which is a smaller band here. Yeah. So you need to combine the trunk rotation, pectoral, and the triceps release together, along with shifting of body weight from right leg to left leg at the time of release, mm -hmm. and, then the forward, yeah. Yeah. and then a follow through, which will facilitate uh, better and added uh, power and, and, power. and accuracy as we saw. Yeah. We actually had the speed gun on the guys, and when we took Dr. Sanju's advice, the, the numbers went up, so the speed went up significantly, and the ball was more accurate, and the guys reported feeling feeling a lot better. So guys, please try and incorporate that into your throws. Remember, we want a nice trunk rotation. Keep the ball low, wrist, elbow, and shoulder on line, and turn, and as you release, walk through. So that generate, uh, turning all that power from the back foot, transferring it forward and into the ball. So uh, Dr. Sanji, thank you so much for that. It's been fantastic. Okay, awesome, so you guys practice it.